hello, um, everybody. This meeting is called to order. It is, what time is it? <laughs> 6 3 on September 30th. Thank you, everybody, for attending today. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone um, here in, uh, in the trust, on, in the staff, um, and also our guest today. I can't see you, but you can probably see me. Um, I also would like to extend a warm welcome to Brian Raish, our newest trustee. Welcome, Brian. If um, I know, uh, I don't know if any of you were able to hear Brian speak at public comment um, at council committee and the general meeting, but um, he has an impressive um, resume. So Brian, if you can just tell us about yourself. Sure, thanks, Suzanne. Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. My name's Brian Raish. Um, I've lived in Newburyport since 2007. Uh, originally grew up in New Hampshire. Uh, I sell real estate for William Ravis uh, Real Estate here in town. Also do consulting work for nonprofits, doing fundraising. Uh, also a rector of a church in Reading, where we do a lot of affordable housing. Um, and I work on the board of Dinah's House in Haverhill, which is a center for women and children who are underserved. So I do a lot of work. I'm the chair of that board. So we do a lot of work to support the kids and find housing for these folks, job training, a lot of grants for um, job training in English as a second language. Um, very committed to affordable housing and uh, with Suzanne's inspiration, um, happy to be part of this, this group. So I look forward to learning more and hopefully to contributing. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we're so lucky to have you. And I know, you know, as, as, those of you on the, on the trust know and and our administrators know and our audience knows we are um you know everyone has these amazing resumes and live very busy lives and so we're just really lucky to have such great talent here on the trust so um welcome again um, you, Brian. <laughs> um our uh, first up on the agenda is our um regular report out from Tiffany Nigro from the Puttendale House on our emergency rental assistance program. Tiffany? Is she on or? She is on, she's on, on she's... our end. Oh, okay, I can't see. I don't know why my... Um... Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Thank Perfect. you. <laughs> All uh, right. So yes, thanks everyone. Happy fall. Happy fall. Um, so I sent the report along um, earlier this week. Um, to date, we've assisted one household um, in the amount of $1,180 um, for October rent. And that was to serve um, two elders in the community. Um, one is Congratulations to them for returning back to work. It's been a long wait uh, to help sustain their, their monthly, not only rent, but all of their um, household expenses. We also have three applications that are pending. We are uh, awaiting some employment information um, for one, some a landlord verification um, for another in a, a W-9 form. So. Um, some three strong applicants um, that we've, you know, collected the information from. We've um, screened for the, the um, that they are COVID qualified. Um, all the income information is qualified as well. Um, and again, like we have in the past, if there are families that are, you know, well beyond the means that we can help them with the with this financial assistance, it's working with um, other agencies in the area, but also RAFT. Um, they've gone through a little transition. I know they're overwhelmed. All systems are overwhelmed. So it's just working together, um, working with the landlords, because um, again, it continues to be um, difficult times for, for people. We're not out of this yet. Um, but I want to say thank you, you know, to the New Report Housing Trust, to um, to the mayor, to the city of New Report for you know putting financial assistance um, funding available to the, to the New Report residents um, for those who are in need to to help provide this you know this vital stabilization. So um, you know, kudos to you in in having this available. So. Well, thank you, Tiffany, and 
and to your organization. You're doing an amazing job. Uh, just a point of clarification. Um, this is in the packet, but for those of you new to um, our emergency rental assistance program, Tiffany just went over our second round data. Um, we had a first round um, that we spent down in the amount of $100,000 and we helped many families. Do you have that uh, rundown just so that we can just uh, update folks with the first round numbers? How many families we supported? Or households, I should say. I'm afraid to toggle out of this because I may never see you again. <laughs> I have it, Tiffany, in case okay. you don't have it handy. Yep, yeah, whoever um, has it. Yep. Yes, I have a total of 32 households, which um, covers, we serve 32 households that included um, eight elders, 37 adults, and 27 children in the city of New Report. And like you said, totaling $100,000. That's fabulous. So, but for this program, you know, what folks may have lost their housing. And so we are so proud and um, delighted to be partnering with the Putnam Gill House in this. Um, we will be talking a little later about our next um, rental assistance program, which will be non-COVID um, emergencies. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later, but um, any questions for Tiffany or Tiffany, do you have anything else to report? Um, just that again, like we've done before, kind of doing more community outreach. I know in the past we've reached out. Um, I just mentioned it at the Greater New Report Social Service meeting um, with you know local providers, um, the New Report Youth Services. We'll be reaching back out to the school um, chambers, so so people are aware there are there is additional funding available um, for those that are in need. Because like you had said, Suzanne, it's like if people are need, that are in need in the report that they know that it's available to them so they don't um, run into the the situation of getting to a court eviction. We, we're, we're in a, we want to be in a preventative stage before it even reaches that point and working um, together with the individual and landlord to avoid that. Right, and now more than ever um, mm -hmm. with moratoriums being lifted um, as well. So we want to make sure we stay on top of it. Great. Any questions, comments from the panel? Okay. Tiffany, thank, thank you. you. Tiffany. Thank you. Alrighty. Have a great evening. Unless you'd like to that's stay on, that's fine. But um, we'll see you next time. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. Alrighty. Um, next on the agenda, uh, the project introduction, the 166, 168 Route 1 project. Did we have something to share? Another? Um... Yes, it looks like we have okay. um, Karen Palestrino from Minco um, ready okay. to give um, a few remarks. Wonderful. Welcome, Karen. Looks like perhaps there's a little bit of difficulty on the audio. Does she need a moment or is it, um, we can always move on and come back if that's. Okay, okay. that's probably a good idea, it seems. Okay. Oh, wait, here I see um, Lou had just popped on. Let me allow him to talk. Okay, wonderful. Uh, just as a reminder for anyone who has a call in number, uh, there is a number on the website you can use as well if you're having an issue with uh, Zoom's audio. Hi, can you can you hear me? This is Lou Minicucci. Hi, Lou. Hi, Lou. Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, I Lou, can. Uh, Lou, I'm sorry. A little problem with my uh, volume, but. Yeah, Lou, sorry. Uh, it, I'm not sure if it's you, but if anybody is running two devices in the same room, if you could mute one of them, uh, that'll prevent the echo. Hi, sorry about that. That's okay. That's okay. We're, we're, we'll figure out the echo at some point. 
Yeah, whoever has two devices in one room, uh, that's probably where it's coming from. And uh, if that's Lou, if that's you, if you could mute whatever device is, which is also emitting audio. Okay. Right here. You still with us, Lou? Uh, uh, all right. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry that. So, would do you want me to speak now? I'm. Yes, please. Yeah, it's fine. Well, we we'll we'll um we can hear you fine. It's just a little echoey, but go right ahead. You're on. Okay. Well, uh, I'm, I apologize about the difficulties. Uh, you know, my name's Lou Minicucci, and I went Minco Development. We are the developers that did one Boston Way, uh, which is 76 units, and uh, we have 25% of those units are affordable. We're currently under construction at three Boston Way, which has 84 units. And um, again, 25% of those units are affordable as well. We are now proposing a third development of approximately 93 units. Um, with 25% uh, affordable. So as it stands right now, it's about 24 additional units um, at the, uh, at what we refer to as a site formerly uh, operated by Haley's Ice Cream. And, and as you're facing Haley's to the right, there's a large uh, white industrial metal building that we own uh, as well. It's about two acres of land and there'll be a three-story and a four-story building uh, of which we'll have, as I said, 24 affordable units. Um, so I, I, the plan, I, I can see the plan on the screen. Um, and we right now in, in the process of finalizing our design. So I don't, didn't want to share that, um, unless Andy has some images of it, but, uh, we're, we're going to be uh, submitting those, um, shortly to the city. And um, um, it's gonna, it, it will comprise of studio units, one bedrooms, two, three, and uh, uh, three bedroom units. We'll have 25% of each of those bedroom sizes set aside as affordable. 10% of the three bedrooms, of course, for, are, at least will be affordable of, of three bedrooms. That's great. Um, can you tell us what other um, amenities are included with this particular site? I thought I read that there were a few extras. Yes. Um, what we hope to do is at one Boston Way, for example, we have a dog washing station. We have a gymnasium. We have a community building. We have an outside fire pit. We have an outside seating area, picnic area. At three Boston Way, where we would have the dog walking, dog washing station, we'll have a bike repair shop. We're gonna have a game room that will basically have a, a bar and a pool table uh, set up. Uh, we'll also have a grill area on a lawn area between the two buildings a yoga studio and a, and a spin bike studio. So those two buildings um, will have, you, those two buildings currently with those amenity spaces can interchange. So somebody lives in one can go to three to use the bike repair shop and somebody in three can go to one to utilize the dog washing station. The, the third building that we're building, this is what you've asked the question on, we'll have some similar amenities, but we'll, all, we'll also be entitled to use all of the amenities in the first building and the second building. So when you've asked me what amenities are available to this third building, all of the amenities I just mentioned to you in the first and third, I mean, the first and second building will be available. And then in the third building, we're gonna have a pool area. Uh, we may have a roof deck and we'll have, uh, we're planning right now an exterior uh, commercial space that we hope that may serve for bike rental and um, 
uh, re certain refreshments, uh, power drinks, water, things that uh, will play off of the rail trail as well. There'll also be a community space and a potential business center so that any resident, any affordable unit resident in any one of the three buildings will have access to all three amenity spaces. That's great. It's a little campus down there. <laughs> um, yeah, that's exactly, well, thank you. That's exactly what we're <laughs> hoping to create a campus. And, um, and we have a very diverse uh, population group. Uh, we have, uh, as well as, you know, the, uh, the people living in the affordable units, we have uh, young professionals who live, who are renting some of our studio units. We have uh, people who are downsizing, selling homes, um, and people in their older, up to, uh, we have some people in their 80s who've sold their homes and moved here. They have kids in Newburyport, want to be next to their their children. So we have a very diver diverse group and uh, hopefully our amenities will, uh, uh, we have a, such a wide variety of amenities. We have something that will suit nearly everybody that will occupy one of our buildings. That's great. Um, Madeline Nash, who is on the trust who could not be here, ha wanted to ask if there were any plans for a, an outdoor play space, like playground area. We, we will have, <clears throat> we, you know, typically uh, these type of developments do not um, attract, for whatever reason, do not attract people with a lot of kids. Um, so we, we, we don't um, have many children, but we are creating um, an outside area in between, in between the two buildings. We'll have uh, a grill area and uh, some open space, as well as the majority of the people that we have at our existing building who have children utilize the rail trail almost exclusively. They're on bikes and strollers and, uh, <clears throat> you know, they, they're going down the rail trail. Um, um, you know, we kids on skateboards. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, it does, I can tell you this, anybody with children, this is, a, there's a lot to do within the surrounding area. We do have some land uh, across the street. We were hoping to create some kind of outside space there, but that is uh, kind of walking trails and potentially a dog walking, uh, a dog walk. But that's something that we haven't, we're exploring, but we haven't presented to the uh, city yet. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the trust or any additional information? No, I'll just say that the building um, right near the rail trail, I see it all the time because I use a rail train. It, it really looks nice. And I do see a lot of people, you know, out and about and it seems like a nice community. Thank you. Uh, most people that I, most people that live there feel that way. We have, we rented the entire building in the first month that it became available, at least all the market rate. We, you know, we had a long list of people for the affordable and that was just a logistics issue as to when they rented. But essentially we were able to rent the entire building in the first month. We have at least 10 people on a waiting list for each unit type from a studio, one, two, and three bedrooms. So at a minimum, we have 40 people on our waiting list. We have created a waiting list for the second building because we actually have people who, even though they know it's not gonna be completed for a year and a half, want to be put on a list and, and uh, looking forward to moving into the new unit. It's certainly become a, a community. Uh, they're impromptu uh, events that the tenants themselves hold. I know at uh, three days before 4th of July, they about 30 of them, 35 of the tenants and, um, got together and called me up the day before to come down and cook hamburgers and you know, they celebrated 4th of July. Um, it's really becoming a, 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 a strong community. And I think when we get more units online and it becomes, the, there'll be more opportunities to create this stronger community, as you said. 
That's great. So give me just um, remind me. So three Boston Way is when when is that? When will that be open and operational? Okay, so three Boston Way is the building. If you yeah go down Boston Way, you yeah. you you know the building that is completed. Yeah. Right after that, there was the ambulance facility. We have torn that building down. We've put footings and foundations in. We expect to be ready in about a year and a half. So that will come online within a year and a half. And obviously, uh, you know, we'll we'll be maintaining a waiting list for the affordable affordable units, and suspect that that will be a quicker trans, a quicker lease up for the affordabilities as as uh, than one. But uh, yeah, that'll be about eighteen months from now. Maybe a little less, but. And 166, 168, what's the production on that? Well, um, that is really, I think, a little bit at, depending upon how quickly the approval process will go with the town um, or city, I should say. Um, <laughs> that could be within uh, two and a half years, could be completed. Hopefully, I'd like to pull a building permit. Uh, within a year, uh, if we could do that, but if it takes, you know, nine months to get an approval, mm. <laughs> you know, it, but after approval, we've got probably four months worth of working drawings and then submittal to the building department, which has 30 days, but it usually goes to 60 and then we'll start construction. Great. That's a nice cadence, you know, it's just, it, it feels, um, it, it, it feels like uh, things are moving finally post COVID <laughs> and um, you have a demand, which is fantastic. Yes. Uh, I mean, we have a tremendous demand for the affordability uh, for the affordable units. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this for, for a long time, over 50 years. And I started out, my, my first job was an executive director of the North end of a housing authority. And I did that for 13 years and then did consulting work for HUD and probably built uh, close to 1500 units of subsidized housing in when at a housing authority level and for other housing authorities throughout the state. Um, and then as well as uh, 40 B's and 40 R's. But I could say that the demand for affordability, although it was always great, I don't think it's ever been greater than it's been within the last two years. Uh, there's a lot of work ahead of all of us to address not only affordable housing, but housing in general. That's exactly true. And um, we are sort of have that missing middle problem um, also rearing its ugly head in Newburyport. So um, yeah, that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> so. Well, hopefully we can address a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, you know, the answer to really affordable housing is it's a supply and demand issue. If there's, you know, if this uh, supply is so thin, then demand increases and then everybody pricing just it continues to escalate. You know, I've talked to, I have friends that do development in other areas where the barrier of entry for development is not as difficult. I mean, when I tell them how long it takes for us to permit projects, they can't believe it, you know, they, yeah, they can get developments approved in six months to a year. And, you know, let's look at how long we started here in Newburyport with the 40-yard uh, district was probably five, six years ago. And I started looking at this project 10 years ago and we doing a 331 unit project in Lynn and that was a seven year process and the city wanted it. Uh, so the, I, I think we'll, only address housing is when we can address the supply issue. Just we need a lot more supply coming online. Absolutely. Uh, anyone additional questions? Karen? Is Brian still on? Yes. Okay. Sorry, yeah, it looks like he's still on. He, he okay. just doesn't have his video on. Okay. Yeah. I can't, again, I can't see. Um, Lou and um, Karen, thank you, thank you so much for joining us and for giving us um, an overview of this new project. It's very exciting. And um, come back anytime. Keep us posted. <laughs> okay, will do. And keep up the good work from your end. And, 
anytime you you would like us to participate, we're we're more than happy to do so. Wonderful. Thank, Thank, you, thank, so you. Much. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Back to the agenda. So um, we have a vote on the trust signatory. I have a. Can we? Are we able to do this vote? Um, tonight we we will we have a quorum so um do you want to run take us through this caitlin or or andy i'm sorry it, uh, what would be the vote tonight the trust signatory so uh, basically i think there has to be a vote for me to sign <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. see a reason why you wouldn't want to do that. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I should note for the record, I was going to mention this at some point tonight that the uh, well, the council did vote to approve the order uh, in ordinance change. We have to record a new document at the registry, so um, we'll be providing that to you accordingly. Okay. Um, but but I don't see any reason at this point why you couldn't uh, take away the or square away the uh, trust signatory. Okay. So does everyone understand what this is? So what what is this just that you can sign things on behalf of the trust? Yeah. System? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I make a motion that you can sign things on behalf of you. <laughs> I will second that. <laughs> oh, it's not, hi, Mayor. Thanks for hi. joining. <laughs> All in favor? Hi. You have to do a roll call vote because you're on remote. Oh. You have to do a roll call. Oh, roll call. Okay. Um, Karen Weiner. Yes. Donna Holiday. Yes. Brian Raish. Yes. Very good. Oh, and Suzanne Cameron, yes. The vote passes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, on to, um, I'm gonna need a little help with this one, um, either Andy or Caitlin. The stables at Basha Farm. Yes, yeah, so before you um, is the application, the local initiative program application for local action units. And this is for um, the stables at Basha Farm Development. Um, by Colby Farm Lane. Um, you may remember this uh, last year came through from the planning board. Um, there's gonna be one affordable unit included um, and this um, application goes to DHCD for signature um, and it shows you what the, um, the sale price will be um, and it also includes at the end of the document, um, the marketing plan. Um, which I um, hope you, you got to take a look at, but it includes, um, you know, includes kind of the situation we're in with COVID. And um, as you can see, it um, talks about having the lottery via Zoom and also um, being able to download the application um, online. Wait, am I looking at that correctly? The affordable price is 336,000? That's, not... That's right. The affordable price is 336,000? How can that be? 336, yep. Yep, this is based on a calculator um, that DHD provides. So the number- I mean, are... just in my work with CHAPA with the um, pricing, it's, it has gone into the 200s, which is a lot higher than it used to be, but I've never seen anything that high. Yeah, we can we can double check, but uh, I mean, that's the number they spit out, right? So- Yep, that's the number. You can see the, um, the flyer here that will that will go out to people um, and be advertised. Are um, these are these like workforce units or something? Like not the lower. There's end? nothing special about these. Uh, ah, I, I'm just shocked by that price. That doesn't seem very affordable to me. I mean, I realize it's a lot less than market rate these days, but it still is a lot. I don't, for I don't some. know if the fact that it's three bedroom makes a difference, or uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Wow. On the market, uh, we know that this I local action. Oh, sorry. So I was going to note that this local action process is the uh, the same thing that would be done with the hillside project. It's these uh, local permits that were issued, not you know non forty B. Um, this right. you know, an insurance that obviously these are affordable, but also that they get added to the subsidized housing inventory. Right, but usually they, I my understanding is DHCD uses the same formula um, that we do for forty B, and that I'm just I'm just shocked it's that high. But I guess I'm just for the record asking that you check with them, make sure it was calculated correctly. Yeah, I, I think that's a good good point for us to do that. Um, it, it does it is does seem like a high number. Um, of course, we've seen uh, exorbitant housing prices in Newburyport, but I think it's worthwhile for us to double check that. Yeah, but it's I agree it's crazy in Newburyport, but it's supposed to be based on income eligibility, not right, not a comparison exactly. to the market rate prices. So, I mean, yep. I know the um, area median income has gone up, but gee, 
<laughs> uh, with an with a eighty percent AMI for a, a for a family of four at one hundred and one, that kind of cal that makes sense. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, sounds uh, three times right three times yeah right. yeah i mean okay, normally we're looking at a figure of 85 right like we're looking at a the, the uh 80 percent of ami for a family of four is like typically in the 80 you know right. but it jumped it really did jump so really jumped. yeah okay what are the market rates unit going market rate i was gonna going? say that they're going between seven and eight hundred thousand each oh. yeah yeah so that, i mean this to me is more which we need this middle income housing too we do yes yeah, sort of more middle income than, than lower income yeah okay i just i just request that you just make sure they do their calculations right <laughs> yeah I, I think it's a good point i to me it hard to illustrate to that there's a much larger housing issue we have than any of these uh you know smaller units that we're adding to the inventory can address i mean it, we could you continue to do that of course um, right. but there's a much larger systemic problem if, if the affordable units are getting into the $300,000 range. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. So I will, you know, I'll confirm that this, you know, this calculation is correct. The only um, issue I saw with this was that um, they must have looked at the website and saw the two code shares um, here. So we, we'll put Suzanne um, as a person who's going to sign it. And also they had included Judy's old email. So um, I'll Judy can't <laughs> shake the trust. I'll be done everything. Yeah, they're on the tennis courts. The, you know, the issue with the parks and this, okay. they want schools to be a lead on it. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, but I've got to go to budget and finance. Another okay. meeting. So yeah, um, thank you. But, uh, please don't forget that um, Bob Courier is uh, on and he is uh, going to be uh, reviewed by the council for the uh, open seat on the affordable housing trust. I met with him today. Wonderful. Uh, he's here and he, you know, I just think it'd be nice if you gave him a couple minutes just to introduce himself to all of you. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Have a good meeting. Sorry. Thanks. Bye -bye. No worries. Um, <laughs> Um, could I actually ask only because I actually was hoping to join the mayor at that other budget and finance meeting, if there's any agenda items you wanted me to speak to, um, if I could do those first. No, I was hoping um, one of you could go through the staff report. Just I know we've covered some of that already, but if there's anything else that you want to um, review, um, that would be great at this point. Um, Andy, do you have any updates about Brown School? I don't know if I would be able to update them on that. Yeah, I think uh, other than it, I'm sure Kaylin can update you. I think the Brown School is the only thing I think I would note at this time. Uh, we're expecting some uh, results on the um, uh, phase two testing or hazmat testing, mm -hmm. uh, asbestos and um, you know lead and things like that, uh, underground storage tank, uh, just to make sure we understand the order of magnitude for cost there. Um, we do have obviously some ongoing issues there and debate about whether or not NYS can stay. Um, we met with uh, Tracy from the Housing Authority yesterday, walked through the building. Um, we're sort of on the same wavelength about the fact that to make a viable project, you really need the entire core building uh, to do that, that actually trying to use just the two upper floors and keeping a city facility or operation on the first floor um, does not make a viable project. That's been said numerous times over the years, um, but we're, we're a bit constrained right now by um, the zoning amendment that assumes the first floor be used by NYS and that uh, there'll be a maximum of 20 units in the building, presumably on the upper two floors um, and, you know, parking and, uh, and uh, park space sort of divided up on the outside, you know, to correspond. But um, it's not clear yet what those results will be, but in a couple of weeks time, we'll have a better idea of what those uh, sort of magnitude costs are and, and issues are uh, from our consultant. And, um, and that's going to help us to make some decisions about what the future of the Brown School is. But um, certainly from my perspective, I've said this for years, I'm, I'm not convinced that trying to have uh, several different, uh, you know, goals out of that property at the same time is necessarily feasible and um, certainly trying to do a housing project at a very small, a relatively small scale in a very complicated building where there's, there's cost for all kinds of utility upgrades. Um, it seems obvious that, that the whole building needs to be done that way and, and NYS would potentially need to find another home. Um, but uh, all that being said, um, we're hopeful to have some much more progress in the coming months uh, in the city's discussion of what to do there rather than the stalemate I guess we've had for uh, a number of years now since it's been transferred to the, from the school department. But that the Housing Authority is interested in partnering with us, uh, regardless of whether or not we have uh, a developer, a nonprofit, or the Housing Authority. Um, we do obviously need to make some further steps here, um, you know, and, and make some decisions about this as opposed to kicking the can down the road um, any yeah. further. Yes, agreed. 
<laughs> I, I would say, by the way, if, if the housing authority, as we go forward in those discussions in, in a couple of weeks, Caitlin can keep you advised as to you know what we get from the consultants. But uh, certainly as the council is having discussions, whether it's this term or the next term, um, about the future of the Brown School, to the extent the Housing Trust has said for years that it'd be important to use municipal property that's, you know, quote, surplus or, or quasi-surplus, depending on, you know, what, what uh, proceeds come in. Um, I think it'd be important to, um, you know, perhaps from the trust perspective to advocate, obviously, for uh, the percentage of affordability, the depth of affordability, um, or, or the scale of the project, number of units, um, in whatever way you think makes sense. But, um, but we'll all collectively, as city officials, need to make some decisions so that um, these, these lingering issues and questions about the Brown School um, costs and, you know, maintenance issues and things like that, um, needs for NYS and affordable housing needs can be somehow addressed at, at long last. All right, great. Thank you, Andy. You can you can go to your other okay. meeting. Okay. Thank you. I apologize. Okay. I have no, to no worries. No worries. So um, I just wanted to just go through a couple of things. So um, we uh, a couple of things were approved. Um, we had asked City Council to increase our membership from five to seven. That was approved. Um, we're really happy about that. We wanted to add uh, more. Um, perspective and scope and talent to this body um, and um, and and so we're working on that. Um, Mr. Courier, I will ha have you speak up in just one second. I just want to get through a couple more things. Um, we were also approved um, for 200,000 for an emergency rental assistance program. Um, I would like to ask the trustees if you would, um, consider um, a working session outside of our regular meeting because I think we just need a little deeper dive on in, this, in the discussion. It will be a public meeting, obviously, but I think we need to set some time aside to just really focus on that program and what it will look like. In addition, I'd like us to look at the um, housing rehab program again and talk about other uh, uses for those funds. Um, um, especially those that will help with energy efficiency and, and greening a property. So I just wanted to put that out there. I think um, we can settle on a day outside of this meeting, but I would like us to think about, um, about doing that, please. I, 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 as chair, I will never ask you to do this, but this time I have to ask. So, because it's just too important, I don't want this to linger. Karen? Um. I'm just wondering if it would be helpful for us to have anyone else at that meeting, like someone who's done this already in another town or something. Absolutely. Like that. I think yeah. that's the time to bring us together for brainstorming and making okay. sure we, we get we want it to be and obviously want to hear from the community and making sure we're getting it right for folks who may need this right and landlords and others. So I just yeah. want it to be a productive meeting. And I, I feel like if it's only the trust members among us, we may not have the experience or expertise to know how to implement something like this, because I know it's not done that often. So. No, no, absolutely. That's a great point. Okay. So you'll be hearing from probably from Caitlin <laughs> and we'll be we'll set some time aside that works for everybody. And, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about like a retreat for a whole day. I'm talking about a couple of hours. <laughs> OK, it's not like a big yeah. deal. OK, no OK, that's, good. That's good. All right, great. Um, what else did I want to say? I think that's it. So, um, Mr. Courier, would love to hear from you. Um, tell us about yourself and and um, your interest in joining us. You're on mute. How's that? Much better? That's better. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, thank you very much for listening to me tonight. Uh, we had a really interesting meeting. I want to say thank you to Suzanne and, and Karen and, and uh, Brian and Madeline, um, all of you. And it'll be nice, hopefully, working with you and coming up with some collaborative efforts to try to come up with more solutions to affordable housing. My background is I've been in the city for 45 years and I've been on numerous boards in the city. I was on the historical commission. I was on the redevelopment authority for 10 years. 
and I'm a strong advocate for housing, especially for affordable housing. And I work for Stratford Capital, which is a private equity firm in Peabody for the last 15 years. I've just recently retired. And they have done all kinds of affordable housing in Massachusetts. And I learned a lot working with them. And uh, they've got a pretty good reputation. And the mayor is familiar with them as well as other members in town. So that's it. Do you have any questions of me? Anyone? I'll open the floor. Sure. Um, first of all, welcome, Bob. Um, you. you know, so I, I'm just curious. I, I've heard of Stratford Capital. I don't know that much about them. I'm, I'd be interested in hearing more and, and what your, um, your, you know, your own professional expertise is and that and how you worked with them. Okay, that sounds fine. Um, what I did for them is I was their real estate person. I'm a commercial and industrial real estate broker. My job was to find them affordable housing buildings, either old schools or mill buildings, something that we could use for investment tax credits. Hmm. And sometimes there's land along with the mill buildings of the schools that can be also used to build new construction for affordable housing. Hmm. So uh, we did, did that continuously and um, they really, have won a lot of awards. They own probably around 25,000 units of housing. So they've got a substantial amount of housing nationwide. Mm -hmm. but, um, their headquarters is here in Peabody and they're okay. a very good bunch of people. They were fun to work with. And um, uh, I, I, I learned a lot from them, which I'm willing to bring to the board. Great, wonderful, thank you. Welcome. Quick hello, Bob. We have a mutual friend, Terry, who emailed to get you on the... Uh... Yes, right, Brian. <laughs> Terry, right here with me. <laughs> All right, hi, Terry. <laughs> Great. Well, welcome and thank you for that. So and we'll look forward to you joining us yep. at some future date. Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you, Um We have to table approval of minutes from May 6th and June 17th because. Donna's not here, or Mayor Holiday is not here, and Madeline is not here, so we don't have a, a quorum as related to the minute. So um, we will table that for next time. Um, as you can see, I'm a stickler for being on time. I will never ever keep you past an hour unless I'm forced. <laughs> Which this is, is one of the most efficient meetings we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, good job, Suzanne. You're kidding yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I I I want us to have quality uh, time together, and um, yeah, we're going to stay on point. <laughs> so, sure. um, Hi, Suzanne. This is Caitlin. Can I ask yes. one point of clarification? Yes. Um, so, as you can imagine, the developer is eager to get going on this batch off farm project yes. and the marketing and the lottery and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so pending confirmation from the lottery agent that the sales price is correct and the typos with the email address for Judy's email, um, are you should there be a vote to, um, I guess, um, have you sign this document on behalf of the trust? I thought what that was what that vote, the earlier vote was. Um, that, the vote, right? that, that vote, the number four is just, I think was in general that you would be signing documents on behalf of the trust. Um, but I guess I just want to know for number five, if you um, are all, I guess, in support of the document and didn't find anything wrong with it, we can go forward with you signing that. Okay. Okay. Um, so do you, would you like a motion on this, Caitlin? I think so. A motion that you, that pending confirmation from the lottery agent that the sales price is correct, that um, the trust would support you signing the document on their behalf. Okay. So moved. Second. Anyone? Brian? I'll second, yes. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Roll uh, call. Roll call. Karen? Yes. Brian? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. The vote passes. Thank, Thank you, you, Caitlin. Oh, my Thank God. You. My daughter just came in the house and she's screaming like a banshee. Um, okay. So, so let's talk about our next meeting. Um, I know that Madeline is not available for November 4th. And so we were looking at October 28th. Eighth, Caitlin, I don't know. You've got um, the schedule. Well, if we want to keep our Thursday nights, which it seems like we we do, we have been doing that for a couple of years. Um, that is, is tough because we have a struggle commission meeting. So 
okay. you can either do the 21st, which is a little bit early if you want, or the um, 18th. November is kind of tricky with Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. Right. So I guess your options are the 21st or um, November 18th. You can think about it and check your calendars and get back to me if you'd like. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm fine with either one. Okay. All right. I think I'm probably fine with either one too. But then we want to carve out a couple of hours in addition, so mm -hmm. we can we can talk about that. Um, Perhaps we do both dates. One of them is the tar targeted um, mm -hmm. assistance discussion, and the other is just a general trust meeting. How does that feel? Yeah. For everyone since everyone's free right so yeah, yeah let's do that let's do okay. let's try to get um a working group together for the 21st because i don't i think that's a little quick for us to have another trust meeting and then we'll have our regular meeting on november 18th okay all right sounds good i'll let madeline know and also um, the mayor as well Wonderful. not to mention october 28th is chapa's annual dinner so oh. other places to be that night that's right <laughs> I, uh, Lee, I have other i have other cameras I mean, to look into it. that yeah. night <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh well anything else for the good of the order not for me thank you all right well Thanks, this is Thank you. This meeting is adjourned at 6.49 p.m. That is the really like, right? That is like the most efficient meeting. <laughs> and we started late. We can started we, at we 6. We need a motion to adjourn it or can you just adjourn uh, it? Oh, yes. We can. We could uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be official. <laughs> I move that we adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor. I, uh, we don't need that. Okay, yeah. we're good. All right, <laughs> have you. a great evening, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you so for much, your everybody. contributions. Thanks, All righty, take care. Bye-bye.